In this Bright Edge vlog, we're going scan to print. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Bright in the Edge. Today I thought I'd share my workflow for scanning film, in this case a 4x5 transparency and my editing process and then how I go about printing the image. It's pretty straightforward, nothing fancy here. This is a piece of 4x5 transparency film that I'm going to convert to black and white and then I'm going to be making a 20 by 24 inch print and I'll be printing my image through Impix. I've had quite a few images printed through them and they, they seem to turn out pretty good. Let's get this loaded up and start scanning. I've got the uh, film loaded and we're going to be using the Epson scan software. I'm going to be scanning at 48 bit color at 1200 dpi. That should be good enough to get my 20 by 24 inch print that I want. So we're going to preview it. Okay, I need to put my crop marks, the area I want in the scan. I need to lighten it up just a little bit, get rid of the color cast. So let's lighten that and then we'll select the white point. Looks pretty good. It's a fairly flat image. Uh, doesn't have a lot of high dynamic range pretty even light so it's so it's easy to control the contrast shouldn't be a problem keeping detail in the highlights that looks pretty good We get the whole, uh, the whole transparency in. So now I'm going to take that into Affinity Photo. I'm going to hit scan and save this onto my computer. So before we get into the editing part, I just want to talk a little bit about what I'm using, what software I'm using. I use Affinity Photo to do all my photo editing and I, I prefer to use Silver FX Pro for my black and white conversions. So that will be what I'm using today. My philosophy and my needs for photo editing are pretty basic. I believe that um, it's more important to get the image right in camera. I don't rely so much on my software to make a, a, a good final image or a good print. I'm hoping that I get, get all that in the camera <laughs> or get as close to it as possible. So let's, let's jump into it now and start doing some editing. So Affinity Photo is telling me it's assigning a, a profile. And I want to make sure I crop this and clean up the edges a little bit. That looks about right. The exposure looks pretty pretty good. It looks uh, actually it looks almost right on. I check it, check the levels here. If you hold down the option key and slide the highlights, you can see where it blows out the highlights. 
And what I'm going to do is take the whites just to where it, once it's highlighted, it's losing texture. So we're going to take it right to where it won't blow it out. I'm okay with it being blown out at the top a little bit. So I'm going to put that back, but I think that should work pretty good. And yeah, that looks pretty good for exposure. Might add just a little more contrast in the darker area. Looks pretty good. It's not a real contrasty scene, but I think the dark area should be just a little bit, a little bit darker. And what I'm going to do here is just put back a little more, put back a little detail here in this, in this area. So I'm going to use the brush and have it on black. I'm just going to set that at 50 percent. That way I still have texture in, up here. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that so I can check it. Let's go back to levels. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, really don't have to do a lot to this image. The real work is coming up. <laughs> now we're going to have to uh, clean it, spot it, zoom in to about 75 to 100 percent. This is an old negative. This is quite a few years old. And I'm sure it has collected some spots and dust and and whatnot over the years and I can see a few right there. I usually do this about at least 75 percent magnification but I'm going to go ahead and do this one at 100 percent. And a good tool in Infinity Photo is the blemish removal tool. It really works well for this type of th stuff and if that doesn't work you can also clone, clone out the spots. This is the probably the most tedious thing you can do with uh, with film and film photography. But before I do that I need to flatten the document. There we go. So now I can click on the spots to remove them. What we're going to do here, I'm just going to do a few just so you can get the idea. You're not going to want to sit here for an hour. <laughs> but the blemish removal tool works fantastic for this tedious work. See that? And I will go up one side cleaning up the, uh, the negative. Once I get to the top I click on the hand and I slide it over about so, if I can see the hand there, then I go down the, to the bottom. That's, that's the process I use to make sure that I don't miss something. So I'm going to go back down and continue to work on this, work on this uh, piece of film. So we can clean it up. So what I think I'm going to do here is catch you on the other side. usually takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to go through a pretty large negative or transparency. It is well worth taking your time and doing it right. If you're going to shoot film, this is it's part of the game right here. Nothing annoys me more on YouTube is when somebody's doing film videos and <laughs> they don't clean up their negatives and they show one in the video. Uh, just really, it's one of my pet peeves. I just, I find that so annoying. That looks pretty good. Well, it's right there. Now, I don't 
often go into 100% when I'm working with film. All you're going to see is grain. It's, there's really, only time I'm back actually ever at 100% when I'm working with a uh, with film is for possibly for sharpening or for cleaning up the negatives. Now this works great in color, but I want it in black and white. And what I do for black and white conversion is I have the NIC plugins and I use Silver Effects Pro 2. I just like the way that um, it converts to black and white. I like the controls that it has. Amplify the white a little bit. Amplify the blacks just a little. Get a little contrast. Not too much because this scene really isn't all that contrasty except that it is a lot of white in there are dark areas. So I guess I guess it really is kind of can be fairly considered fairly contrasty. That looks pretty good. Fine structure. I'll just turn that up just a little bit. All right. I like that much better. I want to double check the, uh, see where the highlights are. I don't think they've changed a whole lot. Just want to make sure. I don't mind just a little bit of texture being lost in here. It is white, so we're taking it just on the verge of white without any detail. It's pretty clean. This is a pretty simple image really to, uh, to work on. I don't really need to do a lot of dodging and burning. It's it's pretty even. Now, if I wasn't going to be printing this right away, I might go ahead and sharpen it. But since I'm going to be making an, uh, a print for this, I think I'll go ahead and wait till I um, enlarge it to actually sharpen up the image. So what I'm going to do here is just save this as a TIFF. I'm going to export it. Now I'm going to size it for print. And the print I want is going to have about an inch border around it. So we're going to create a new document. Now I should say that before I, I do this, most printers from what I read, are really good at up files and printing. The quality is, is um, supposed to be pretty good when you do it that way. But, but since I want a border on this one, I will go ahead and make it the size it's going to be. So I'm going to res it up in, in the Affinity Photo. Now I've done this quite a bit in Affinity Photo and I find that the prints I get back, I've done it up to about 20 by 30 inch, inch sizes. And the uh, images I'm getting back are, are very good. So I don't know how much better they would be if I was to just send a raw or a um, native file. But for my purposes, I'm going to go ahead and make a, uh, a new file for the print. So for the type, we're going to make photo. And we're going to make this a 20 inch wide by 24 tall at 300 DPI. Now what I'm going to do here is select the image and command C to copy it. I'm going to paste it into this new new file with command V. I 
we're going to want this to be about an inch top and bottom is that the exact I think I'm going to want an inch from on the bottom and on the top and the sides are probably a little bit wider so I'm going to go up here to arrange and hit middle and hit center I'm going to go ahead and create a fill layer drop that behind there we go now I'm going to uh, do a little sharp and a little unsharp mask before before I send this off to be printed filter unsharp mask looks pretty good want to over over sharpen it too much being that this is four by five film you can't you can't even see the grain it's just amazing I think that'll work well, there we go that is ready to be sent off to the printer now I go through MPEX and they want the files as JPEGs I was a little concerned about that when I first started sending images to them. I was thinking, well, if it's not a TIFF, it's, the quality isn't going to be very good. But I've been getting some really good uh, quality prints back from them. And I'll have this printed on true black and white paper. And it's a nice, nice weight print. So we're going to go ahead and uh, save this as a JPEG. Export it. that's it that's how I prepare my images to be printed well I hope you've got something out of this video today so I just share my my uh, process and how I scan film and even with the most basic equipment you can make some some very nice prints it is hard to beat this size of film well, until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.